Hi there, I am Lorenz and I will present how to navigate in the presence of unknown obstacles using anomaly detection. Let's jump right in. So the motivation for this actually comes directly from our previous work where we learned to predict terrain properties in a self-supervised fashion and then use these terrain properties to navigate in outdoor environments. The issue now becomes how do we get information about untraversable terrain since that's by definition very hard to get in a self-supervised fashion. So what we would like is a navigation policy that we can train with only positive labels and information about traversability but still gives us information about untraversable terrain. And something else to consider is when we do semantic segmentation and encounter unknown obstacles at test time, it is possible that the uh, network that gives us semantic information gives very high confidence predictions, even if it's a obstacle or something in the field of view that it has never seen before. And that's something we would like to avoid by knowing what's unknown, so to say. So outdoor environments are very complex and if we knew perfectly everything that's possibly present in the environment, we could do binary classification. But since that's not possible, because we can have things that we have never seen in training time, we need to figure out what's novel in the image and then consider these novelties in the image also unsafe and thereby do navigation via anomaly detection. How do we do this specifically? Uh, we want to train this in a self-supervised fashion so we get information from robot missions over various terrain and what we do is we get all the footholds of the robot and then project those into the camera images that the robot has seen at various locations and timestamps. And then we go ahead and extract image patches around those foothold locations and these image patches is what's fed into the uh, network at training time. And this is an example of what this looks like. On the left, you can see the foothold projections. And then on the right, all the image patches that are being fed into the training algorithm. You can see that the untraversable parts of the environment are not present at training time. So they would be considered an anomaly in the end after training. We uh, evaluated various anomaly detection methods and sensor modalities for the uh, anomaly detection methods. They all use a convolutional architecture such that even though we train on patches we can afterwards deploy them densely on larger input images in an efficient way. All these three methods share the same architecture for a feature generator which takes multimodal input which is the stacked channels of sensor modalities and generates features from that. The first method is based on an autoencoder where from these generated features we try to reconstruct the original input images, then compare the reconstruction to the original image and make a decision on novelty based on the quality of reconstruction. The next method is a deep support vector data descriptor where you try to map all features at train time into a hypersphere of minimal radius and at test time you assume that all terrain features that fall outside of this hypersphere are anormal and whatever is inside of this hypersphere is a, a normal terrain descriptor. Finally, we have real NVP, which is based on normalizing flow. This allows you to do exact uh, likelihood inference of the posterior distribution. And at test time, you assume that samples that have low likelihood of being generated by the, this terrain distribution are unsafe and anormal and whatever has high likelihood is considered normal and therefore safe. Now for sensor modalities. Um, I will explain them based on this sample image and specifically on a terrain patch around this foothold. So the first one is quite straightforward. It's just the RGB information from the color imager. And then the second one is the depth channel of the depth imager. Now for the rest of these three modalities, we also use the information from an IMU, which is uh, inside of the camera that is deployed on the robot. And that gives us information about the gravity vector. So what we can do is we can split the geometric information into a horizontal and a vertical component, thereby decoupling the 
perceived depth from the orientation of the camera. We also explicitly give the network access to the surface normal, which we compute from the depth image in the gravity aligned frame. And we also further process the surface normal by computing the angle between the vertical and the computed surface normal such that we have a single value which encodes the inclination of the terrain. When we now evaluate this experimentally, we created training data in various environments containing sand, grass, asphalt, gravel, and such. From that, we extracted 10,000 train patches in a self supervised fashion and then went to a completely distinct and different environment to collect test data, where we collected 500 safe test patches in a self supervised fashion and then manually labeled 500 unsafe terrain patches to uh, be able to compute a performance measure. We also collected data in a variety of environmental conditions. Please uh, check out the paper to get to our results there. The short version is that if you have more data from different environmental conditions, it's just strictly better performing if you have more data. How we evaluated all anomaly detection methods and sensor modality combinations is by computing the area under the receiver operator curve as a performance metric, and we trained every combination of anomaly detection methods and sensor modalities 10 times with different random seeds, such that we get a mean performance and a standard deviation of performance over different runs. Now, don't worry about the size of this table, I will break this down for you, but if you really want to dive into it, then uh, check out the paper. What we see is that generally more information means higher performance. So if we add additional sensor modalities, performance increases. And even if we add multiple geometric sensor modalities, performance is higher than with a single geometric one. The auto encoder generally has good performance, especially if you provide it with geometric information. However, it struggles if you only provide it RGB information. So what we see for SVDD is that performance is overall quite poor for almost all sensor modality combinations. And we also see that we have quite a high variance of performance over those runs. And finally, real NVP, the normalizing flow method, consistently performs well. And it also has the highest performance overall when we use the RGB information together with gravity line depth and surface normals. Now, finally, this is the highest performing modality combination deployed on a sensor stream. On the left, you can see the RGB channel of the input, but we also use the depth and normals. On the right, you see the anomaly mask, which classifies an individual pixel as safe or unsafe. So you can see here in sunny conditions, it performs quite well. It identifies all geometric obstacles uh, as obstacles. What you can see on the horizon there, the, this upper red sliver, that's just missing depth information because the stereo camera doesn't have a far enough range. Now this is deployed in an environmental condition it was not trained on, and there it does get confused by reflections on the ground. But you can see in the paper that if we also give training information from the same environmental condition, it approves. Finally, we can see that the network is able to detect unknown obstacles, so in this case, if we light a fire, both the smoke and the fire are classified as anormal and therefore unsafe. And that's good, such that our robot doesn't run into the fire. To come to a conclusion, the code and data set that we use for this paper are all online. So you can head on over to our GitHub, play around with the code, or try to build up on our data set to do your own anomaly detection. For future work, we are interested in automatic exploration, such that we try and go towards unknown space in a safe way to collect more data and improve our capabilities over time. We would also like to try and inject sparse instances of failure into the training data, such that we can make sure that these particular failures never occur again. Thank you.